Hey, how are you doing today? This is Donna St. Louis here, and I'm so glad to be on Facebook Live today. It's been a crazy 24 hours, and I just had this fantastic conversation um, with a colleague of mine, and we were actually talking about what makes people successful. Like, why are, and, and I love the question because they're like, why do some people come through your program and they're like super successful? And they've heard me say this, right? Like, I'm not the person going, 100% of the people that come through make a million dollars in three weeks. No, that's not it at all. Um, there is, you know, so the question was, why do some people come through your program and they're super successful? What's up, fam? Yes, make sure you put hashtag fam if you're an HPZ family member. What's up, fam? I see you. So why do people, some people find success and some people find failure? And I've been really, really lucky to work with um, to work with just amazing people that have come through the program, but I will tell you there is a trait, there is a trait that comes through that is significant. It comes through all of the people who are going to be really successful have the same exact trait characteristic. In fact, I was talking to Elizabeth hashtag fam. What's up, Elizabeth? Elizabeth hashtag Lisa Demi. What's up, Lisa? She's fam too, um, and. But there is something about it and I wanted to share it because then I had to go back and look back into my history and I had to see that trait. And I don't even know if it's one trait as much as it's a series of, it's a series of things that they do and it happens over and over again. And so then right at the end of this, I'm going to make an announcement to you um, because it was something that was done for me when I was homeless and I want to, I want, and that one thing that somebody did for me was the difference that was a fork in the road in my journey. And it helped me go this way rather than this way, right? And so I want to share that with you because I think, you know, it's my way of giving back while at the same time making sure that I stay true to just having integrity. So let's talk about this. So when I was homeless, I, you know, 19 years old, I'm living in my car. And quite honestly, I had you know, not even considered suicide. Like some people like they considered it. I didn't consider it. It was a foregone conclusion. I had made a decision and I call that person Donna 1.0. Donna 1.0 had made a decision that what she was going to do was die. She had put all the things in place to make sure that was going to happen. Um, clearly I wasn't a success there, right? But I, but I had gone down that road. So things were really bad. They weren't, they weren't kind of bad. They were freaking horrible. Um, so I'm living in a car. I haven't eaten for a while. Um, you know, I'm, I'm drinking rain, rain water. You know, there's, you know, it's just bad. It's just bad. So that was my life living in a car 19 years old and really no, you know, I, and I was, I was smart enough to know that I was stupid enough to be there. So I wasn't one of those, like I'm 19 and I know everything. I didn't know shit. Right. So um, but what I wanted to keep was I always wanted to keep my integrity. I always said I would die with my integrity. My word, I always feel like my word is the only thing that I have. And if I have nothing else, I have my word. And so it was really important for me to keep my integrity, keep my word, and be the person that my mom and my grandmother, even if I was gonna, if I was gonna die, I was gonna die with my integrity. That was like a big deal to me. So anyway, you know, as luck has it, I, I end up getting out of the car, right? So I'm not in the car and I'm act, I actually have this job. I'm working as a receptionist at this company. And I was really interested in IT. I was so interested in IT and I had, I was just dying to know everything I could about technology at the time. I mean, like this was the early 90s. So IT was still kind of new. There were no women in it at all. Uh, I was a mathematician, so my ability to just understand science and math was always something that I had. And I talked to this guy who worked in the IT department, and I said, I really want to learn more about IT. And he was like seasoned, right? And he just looked at me like, I'm not about to take my time with this girl and teach her IT because it's just going to be a waste of my time, right? I'm going to say something that's going to get too hard and she's going to be out. And that was like his mindset. But at the same point, he also said, and I remember we had this conversation later. He told me later that what he thought in his mind was, but if she's serious, if she really, really, really wants it, I'll give her a path to get there. So his whole expectation going in was that I was going to fail. 
that he was gonna tell me to do something. And the one thing that he was gonna tell me to do was gonna be an absolute no. Nothing that had to do with my integrity, by the way, let's just be clear, but it was gonna be the one thing that was gonna be a no. So now you have to know my situation. So at the time, I am literally bringing home a whopping 800 whole dollars a month. Like that was it, I'm staying in, um, a motel that, you know, uh, an efficiency. And it was one of those like pay by the day or pay by the week kind of things. Um, it's across the street from my job. So I could literally walk over there cause clearly my car was gone. And so he says, this is what I need you to do. He takes out this paper pen, writes down the name of three books. And he said, if we're going to work together, you need to have these three books. And he goes, and I will not start working with you until you have these three books. But if you have these three books, if you have these three books, I'll work with you. And I'm like, okay. Now, I was excited. I, I went and caught the bus. I went over to Barnes and Noble or whichever bookstore it was at the time. I think it was Barnes and Noble actually. So I go to Barnes and Noble. I head over to the technology department. And the very first about book he tells me that I have to get is called Excel for, for Professionals. Excel for Professionals is like this thick. I mean, it is like, for people who remember phone books, it's like a phone book size book. And it is everything from what is a cell to how do you write visual base for applications and how do you connect to databases and all this other stuff. Just this whole thing. The second book that he told me had to, had to get was an access book, right? and Access would teach me databases. And again, really thick, another Microsoft book. And then the third book that he told me I had to get had to do with um, networks. So it was all about, at the time, Novell networks were huge and I had to get a Novell networking book. These three books combined, one book, by the way, one book by itself was over $200. These three books combined were over half of what I made that month. It was like $600 worth of books. I mean, they were just stupid expensive. And I'm just like, dude, you know, by the time we finish with tags, tag title, I got to carry them on the bus bag, $600 worth of books. I knew going in that I could not just walk in and buy $600 worth of books. I know I'm like, I can't, what am I going to do? Um, but this guy, but I feel like the opportunity is passing me by. Remember yesterday I said, you have to have three things. You have to have preparation, you have to have the opportunity and you have to take action, right? Well, the opportunity was in front of me. He was going to teach me. The opportunity was there. I was excited for it. The second thing is I was willing to take action. I was willing to buy these books. Let's just be crystal. It wasn't a lack of willingness. I did not have a whole month's worth of rent kind of hanging around. I didn't have it. So I didn't have the money. And, but I really wanted it, but I wanted to work with him. So because I didn't have the money, it kind of showed that I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for the criteria, the requirements in order for him to work with me. And, um, and I went back to him and I said, I really want to do this. And I didn't say I don't have the money. What I said was, I have to figure out in a very short amount of time what I need to do to have the money to buy those books. If I buy the first book, will you start working with me? He said, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch, right? So I have to get all these books. So there, it, was a, it was an all in or nothing, it wasn't the BS. But the first thing that I want you to pay close attention to is that I did not say, I don't have the money. I was actually in my mind in solution mode. The book, not getting the books was not an option. Not taking him up on this opportunity was not an option. I needed to do what I needed to do in order to get those books so this guy would teach me, period, the end. I was going in IT and he was gonna help me and damn it, nothing was gonna stop me. Not even not having money. Not even at the point where I only made $800 a month. Working full time. So what I did was I and, and people always talk about pride and all this other stuff, like they let their pride get in the way. What I did to earn this money was I went to the guy who was the CEO of the company at the time, the, the company that I worked for, they had the garage that was under the building, right? And so not basement, but like under the building. 
And I said, um, listen, my shift that I work usually starts around noon and it goes until 8, 8.30. I was wondering if I could wash cars of the people who work here in the morning. That's what I asked the CEO if I could do that. I said, I just need to earn some extra cash. And now you got to know the CEO is also the guy who's very helpful in regards to getting me out of my car in the first place. So, and he asked me, he goes, is something going on? And I'm like, Tony's willing to work with me. He's willing to teach me IT. However, in order for me to work with him, I have to buy these books. And I showed him the list of books and I said, and you got to know, I carried this paper around like it was a lottery ticket. I it was like the name of these books were burned in my brain. It didn't matter. I carried this paper around like he had just given me a winning lottery ticket and I pulled it out of my pocket and I said, here are the books. And the CEO looked at me and he goes, and so what are you going to do? I said, I just want to, if I could wash people's cars, you know, before lunch, maybe if I could do some odd jobs. I said, do you need your house clean? Do you need somebody to come do housekeeping? Um, I said, if I could wash cars on the weekend, I really don't care. I know how to wash cars. I can wash cars. Whatever I need to do, I need to do. Because at the end of the day, it's not about not having the money. There is more money on this planet that we know what to do with. I'm sure I can figure out how to find $600, right? And so the CEO is so sweet. He goes, well, you still work by the hour. I go, yeah. He goes, I can give you some extra hours. He goes, um, one of the ladies that was, was, uh, she was getting ready to go out on maternity leave. And he goes, we could use some help on the morning shift. He goes, if you want to, you can come in from eight o'clock to eight o'clock. You can work a 12 hour shift. He goes, that will give you 60 hours a week as compared to 40 hours, hours a week. I was like, really? This minute that if I did this for four weeks, that within the next month, I would have an additional $400. That was just amazing to me. And of course I did the math immediately and I was like, okay, that's gonna give me an extra 400 bucks. Like, you know, I'm super excited because he just added 50% to my paycheck just by letting me work a few more hours. And I said, okay, that's great. I said, so now I gotta figure out how to get the last 200 bucks. I said, that's gonna get me half, I said, that's gonna get me more than halfway there. And I was so thankful. And he was like really sweet. And so he literally said, Don, if you want to do a car wash here on the weekend, that's fine. And he actually offered to give me the money. And I said, no, I said, I don't want you to give me the money. I want to earn it period. I don't want this to be a gift. I want to earn it. I want to earn it. I want to pay for it out of my pocket. If it's that important, I want to come up with it. And anyway, long story short, I ended up getting the money. It took me about a month. It really did. It took me about a month, but it was really about, it wasn't about having, Oh, you know, and, and I hear people now is like, well, you know, that was you when you were 19 and that was cute. And I'm like, no, I still had pride when I was 19. I mean, think about it. I had pride when I was 19. It wasn't like I suddenly got pride when I got older. I had fucking pride. I didn't want to have to go and wash my coworkers cars to make money. You know, I, but no, I did. I was like, dude, I'll wash your car. I'm like, Hey, you know what guys, I'm going to wash cars here on the weekend. And people were like, you're going to wash cars here on the weekend. And I told them I got to buy these books. If Tony's going to work with me in the only way, and I was very open and honest about what I was doing. And that's the big number two. The big number two that many of my entrepreneurs do is that besides the fact that they don't say I can't and they come up with a solution, the second thing they, they, and they go, how do I make this happen? The second thing they do is they also go and tell everybody what they're doing. They go and enlist. They go and let everybody know I'm getting ready to do this. I'm getting ready to do this. I'm going to do this. Right. So that way other people know they don't really keep it a secret. They're very clear. Like this is the journey I'm on. My most successful ones don't make it a secret at all. They're like, this is the process I'm in. This is what I'm doing. This is what's happening next. This is the goal I'm trying to hit. They're very open with it. They haven't, that's the thing. They don't let pride get in the way of them getting their goal. People are so stuck on their ego and pride and looking a certain way and being a certain way. What's up, Barbara? That they let pride get in the way of them reaching my goals. Do you know that I could give a shit what those people think about me today? And I damn sure didn't care then. Right? I'm like, they're not... Was I, I really care what they think about the fact that I'm, I got to wash cars to buy these books? No, I didn't care. I was your coworker, but I was willing to wash your car. But here's the thing. Because I put my ego aside and said, I'm going to wash cars on the weekend. I'm trying to earn enough money to buy these books. They showed up and supported me. They showed up and let me wash their car. People wanted to give me money. And I'm like, no, this is not a donation. I'm not a charity. I want to earn this. 
And by virtue of me saying I wanted to earn it, even more people showed up. So I had more than enough money to pay for the books. When the next month came around and I showed up in Tony's office and I said, I got the books, he looked at me and he was like, no shit. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> like, no shit. I'm like, I just need to understand some of the terminology. I don't understand all of it. And so I got the books. I started reading through the books. And quite honestly, one thing led to another, which led to another, which led to another. And before you know it, I'm working in, I'm, I'm working in IT. I use those books to build a software system, a customer service system. I was in customer service, so it made sense. I built this thing in customer service. It ended up being something that the CEO thought was absolutely amazing. He immediately moved me to the IT department where now Tony didn't have a choice except for to coach me all the time. But the fact of the matter is there are three things that happened. There was an opportunity. The one thing I will tell you about every single solitary one of the entrepreneurs that I work with is they recognize the opportunity. They go, here is a chance. This person is doing something to do to to make me better. How do I take how do I take full advantage of that? That's number one. Here's the big number two. Beyond the opportunity, beyond the opportunity, the other thing that's that is huge is that I needed to take action. I could have said, I ain't paying six hundred dollars for books. I mean, why can't you just teach me? I mean, dude, it's just in your head. I mean. What if I just show up? I could have done all of those things, right? I could have bitched and complained. I could have said it's too hard. I could have said, I don't like the way that you're doing it. I could have come up with every excuse in the world why I couldn't do it. But the one thing about every one of the entrepreneurs that I work with is that they do the same thing. They're just like, I'm not gonna let anything stop me, nothing. They're like, I just need to figure out what I need to do to get there. There is no excuse in the world. And I hear that, and I love to hear that. I love to hear that there's no, even if there's a miscommunication between us, they'll both go, okay, either I misunderstood or you misstated or whatever, it doesn't really matter, let's go keep it moving. Like there's no excuses. They don't wanna play the blame game, they just wanna get it done. And so that's the big number two. Here's the big number three that I absolutely love. And there is a fourth one, by the way. Here's the big number four, is that many of them don't want charity. If I say, oh, you can just do it for free, they're like, nope. I had a client, by the way, who would call me pretty regularly. Anytime she needed help, she would call me and I'd help her. It was before I was coaching, I'd help her. I wouldn't even think about, yeah, no, whatever, you can call me. And she would call me and I'd take an hour, two hours, I'd help her. Never, ever, ever talked about money. And she was moving forward at a certain clip. She stopped calling me as much. And then she kind of like fell off the radar a bit. And the thing that she was working, working on didn't go so well. And so then we, we talked like a, actually a couple of years later after I started doing coaching and she called me and she goes, I want to get in your coaching program. And I said, why would you want to get in my coaching program? I said, I coached you before. And I mean, obviously it didn't work out for you. Why would you want to coach with me? And she goes, no, no, everything you coached with me was fine. She goes, but I consistently tried to pay you and you consistently wouldn't take money from me. And she goes, so I felt guilty every time I called you so much to the point that I wouldn't call. She goes, but if I pay you, then I feel like I got some skin in the game. You got a little skin in the game. We both got some skin in the game. We both got something to lose. Boom. It was, the, it was when I really learned the value of actually charging people because then they have expectations and I have expectations. They have expectations of me, I paid you, I expect you to help me reach the goal, and I have expectations of them. You paid me, I expect you to reach the goal, right? So that was like a big epiphany for me because I used to do all my coaching for absolutely free and I also found that a lot of people would do some of it and they'd follow some of it and then they wouldn't do some of it. And then there's a number four and I'm gonna share the number four with you in one second. First, I wanna share this with you. So. One of the things that people have complained, not in a bad way, right, um, is that they said, I'm really, really interested in getting in your, your mastermind, your um, high profit zone mastery program. But I also recognize two things. Number one, I got to qualify, right? That's the big one. And um, because they have to be at a certain point within their business, they got to know where they want to go. Well, I shouldn't even say they got to know where they want to go, but 
they got to at least be able to sleep with me for five days, right? So um, it's and and they're and it's very limited. And they're like, and I know you do it once a quarter, and I got to make sure that I'm there. And so there's this whole thing, and they kind of get stuck with, you know, I don't even know where I'm starting, and I want to get in your program, but it's just unaffordable for me. I don't think that I can do it right now. I, I'm not sure what to put in place, and so there is a hesitation, right? And I've always felt bad about that, that people have that hesitation that, that they want to do it, but they find it unaffordable and they're, they're not ready. They're not ready for that kind of investment. And that's fine. Um, I was talking to Elizabeth this morning, family member, and we were talking about this. It was so interesting. She said, we're talking about the umbrella and she said, Donna, you know what it, what it is. It's not that people need to know their journey first. She goes, first, they need to know what they don't know. She goes, that's what they need to know. She goes, I got into your program because I, I know the journey that I want to take. Like she was very clear on that, but she goes, I just need, I know you know how to get me there. So she already had the, the baseline. She already had the basics. She already knew that information. And so it was one of those things where in her program, she's like, I first teach people what they don't know. She goes, because they think they do. And then they come to my program and they're like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Um, and so with that said, I have decided that now, and I, I normally don't do this, I'm going to offer two programs. The first program is for mastery. It is for people who are, who are ready to take action and they already have certain things in place and they wanna move forward. And after this, I'm gonna tell you the fourth thing that, that all these entrepreneurs had in common. But here's the, here's the thing about it. So I'm actually doing a boot camp. And the boot camp will tell you everything that you need to know about a specific subject. The first subject I'm putting out there is going to be speaking. The second subject I'm going to put out there is going to be about sales, right? Because those are the two things you got. You got to know how to sell. You got to know how to consult. If you don't know how to do those two things, right? And so if you want to be a speaker, you want to be a coach, you want to be a consultant, we're calling it the professional speaker boot camp. A lot of times I tell consultants and coaches, by the way, that they should leverage speaking in their business in order to get more leads. It just makes sense. Not everybody has to do that, but it does make sense. Why not get paid for marketing? So with that said, if you go to High Profit Bootcamp, highprofitbootcamp.com, you will see that there is upcoming a bootcamp that is for people who are like, everything you wanted to know about the speaking business, but we're afraid to ask. And by the way, if you're a coach or a consultant, you're like, but I want to be a speaker. I want to be a coach and consultant. You can come as well. I don't want it's, I will 100% cover you as well. Don't worry. But this is really hundred percent. It is how, if you want to be a speaker, you want to get your message out. You want to help people. A lot of speakers, I tell them they should be coaches and consultants as well. This is 100% for you. So hi, profitbootcamp.com all right so here is um here is the number four here is the big number four traits that these experts and entrepreneurs that are successful have in common and it's the thing that i also recognize that i had and i didn't realize it until again i was having this conversation this morning and it was that i felt like i needed to have skin in the game I didn't want charity. I didn't want someone to pay for it. I didn't want someone to do it for me. I wanted to have skin in the game. I wanted to be the person that was out there going, no, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pay for it. And why is that? You're like, but Donna, if somebody would've given you $600 just to pay for the class, why didn't you do it? Because there is something different that happens with your mindset when you've invested your money. When you have done the work to, you've paid your money and you've done all your things, all of a sudden, there is a different mindset in regards to that you want that return on investment. See, I wanted to remember every time that I got stopped out with this guy where we were working on stuff, every time I got frustrated with IT, every time I wrote a line of code that didn't work, every time it was two o'clock in the morning and I was still writing code, every time that I was just like so frustrated and I wanted to have just like a fuck this moment, I wanted to remember that I watched that guy's car over there. And that I wash her car. No matter how nasty this chick was me, to me every day, I washed her car. And no matter what great job I did on her car, and then she'd walk in and go, I think you missed a piece of lint. That I went and I picked up that damn lint and I washed her car for this. 
I wanted to remember every time things got tough, all the work that I did to get to this moment and there, and this stupid one line piece of code was not going to stop me. It changes your mindset when you put skin in the game. What's up family? When you put skin in the game, when you're like, I'm going to make this investment. And here's the thing. Michael says this cool thing all the time. Make sure you guys put hashtag fam so people know you're here. There's this cool thing that Michael says. He goes, you want to know what the price is? The price is going to be much less than it should, but more than you want it to be. Let me tell you, $600 worth of books? <laughs> Dude, it was a hell of a lot more than I wanted to be. That's for sure. Right, it was two thirds of what I had, what I brought home every month. With that said though, it was probably, no, it was definitely the best investment that I made because that one single investment changed the trajectory of my entire life. That one investment, it was a hard investment. I worked my ass off to make that investment. I read all those stupid books. I stayed up late nights. I was up sometimes until two o'clock in the morning, but it was the best investment that I made. In other words, it was my skin in the game. And you know, when I look back, you know who I feel like I owe? No one. I never look back. I'm appreciative. Let's be crystal. I'm super appreciative. I'm always like, I appreciate the fact that my boss gave me an extra four hours a day. I appreciate the shit out of that. I am extra appreciative of the police officer who helped me get the job in the first place. I will never forget Officer Smiley. I am extra appreciative of that little heifer who paid me $10 to wash her car and pick that damn lint up on the floor. I appreciate her because she reminded me that I will never ever put myself in a position where I am not prepared to make an investment in myself. She reminded me never to be in the position where I have to beg somebody to help me out and also never be too proud not to pick up that damn piece of lint. So I appreciate her. I know you guys have, I really do. I appreciate her. So it's never ever that I don't appreciate those people. I do, but I don't owe them shit. I paid the money. I washed the car. I worked my ass off and I moved myself from where I was to where I wanted to be. Thank God they gave me the opportunity to do it and I appreciate that opportunity. But here's the thing, opportunity, opportunity without action and preparation means nothing. So you might be prepared for it and you might have the opportunity, but if you don't do shit with it, you're not going to succeed. It's that simple. I have for the first time ever opened up the high profit zone blueprint for the lowest amount that I could possibly do it for people who are like, Donna, I at least need to learn how to do this stuff so I know how to speak the language. I at least need to get enough information where I can go and start making money in this industry. I at least need that. And I know that you've helped other people get there and the fact that you're putting the opportunity out there, because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna give it a shot. And quite honestly, if the people don't take me up on the opportunity, why would I keep offering it? It's that simple. So I'm not telling you I'm going to do this forever. I'm literally going to give this a shot. So if you're, if you're running, if you're wondering when the dates are, the dates are November 21st and November 22nd in Orlando. Um, I even found a hotel nearby that, that wasn't very expensive at all. I think it's like $64 a night and it's a condo. So people can share rooms if they want to. Um, if you are interested, send me a DM. Just go to um, High Profit Bootcamp dot com oh and that's the other thing we're not letting a thousand people in it's only open for 25 people so if you're interested get in sooner than later if i don't see the interest i'll just shut it down it's that simple i'm going to put the opportunity out there i'm going to offer it to people i'm not charging them like what i would normally charge for for my services at all but if it is something that you want to do i'm going to be just so crystal if you want to do it all the excuses and the bullshit has to go away this is your time and if not, that's fine too, but I'm just putting it out there. Anyway, I love you guys. I have to go get on my call with um, High Profit Zone family member, Kevin. Um, what's up, fam? I know he's watching. We had a call and I said, I got to do this. And he goes, go do your thing and then call me back. And I'm like, I'm going to call you. So 
Now I gotta go call you. So Kevin, get ready for a phone call. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one.